I studied a master artist in this sketchbook. It took me about a month to fill it with sketches that leveled up my skills in ways that I didn't think possible. In this video, I will show you what I learned and I will tell you exactly how to do it. There are three big lessons that have drastically improved my art faster than I thought. The third one is the secret to unlock your own personal art style. The second one is for those like me that have never done master studies before. And without this lesson, all the time spent practicing is basically useless. Oh, man. Sorry, mate. And the first lesson is the reason why I bought this massive book and that's because printed references are better. Okay, let's unpack that for a moment. What does this mean? Basically, if you want to learn from an artist that you admire, you're better off buying a book of his works rather than looking at them at a screen. Why? Two main reasons. Number one is counterintuitive. Let's see if you guess it. It has to do with how many pages there are in this book. <laughs> this massive book has about 450 pages. But Frank Frazetta produces thousands of works in his 60 plus years of activity as an artist. So having a book restricts your options. It reduces choice paralysis. In other words, it makes it easier to pick one reference for your drawing session. Without a book, I would search for Frank Frazetta on Pinterest and I would see this. An infinite scroll of endless options. And if you're anything like me, you will waste hours and hours on end looking at all of these before struggling to choose which one to draw. If you're brave and you have a lot of patience, you could block an hour in order to go through all of these and do your own Pinterest board. But the book is essentially a Pinterest board who has already been created by people that know way more about the artist's art. And even if you don't care about having a good selection, there's really no way that looking at images online can compete with reason number two, which can be summarized in one word, and that is investment. I think that this is the most expensive book that I've ever bought. <laughs> That's a lot. It seems silly, but the fact that I had to spend a lot of money in order to buy this book literally means that I'm invested in learning from it. And it's not only about the financial investment. Owning a book is also an emotional investment. Look at this thing. This thing has a presence. It's part of the decor of the house and yeah, it's a beautiful object. Each page is a story and you get to learn more about the artist and you'll get to learn more about the artworks that you're choosing at references. And all of this without being distracted by notifications popping on your screen every two minutes. Okay, enough about this book. I'll leave a link with more details in the show notes. Moving on, I mentioned that lesson number two is for beginners like me that don't know what master studies are. It's easy to get excited and wanting to learn everything that the artist does, but that's exactly how you end up learning nothing. Look at Frank Frazetta. This guy is known for his powerful compositions, for his dramatic poses, for the depth of his renderings, for his amazing anatomy of the human body and anatomy of other creatures, not so much. like. This dinosaur here, that's what's going on here. Franco. Anyways, dinosaurs aside, there's so much stuff that he's mastered that how can you possibly not get lost in all of this? That's why it's important to choose one single thing that you want to focus on. And don't worry, some of the other stuff will rub on you while you get immersed in the artist's work. But try to be intentional about just one thing. I personally like to write it down in the first page of my sketchbook. It's going to sound random because I've never mentioned it before, but my intention for this sketchbook was to learn how Frank Frazetta draws hair. <laughs> yeah, hair. Well, actually anything lightweight that blows in the wind or gets dragged by movement of the characters it's attached to. I just fell in love with how organic it feels and it really makes you feel the motion. And by having this clear intention on what I wanted to focus on learning, I make sure that I practice from references that have what I'm looking for. So it was also easier for me to choose my references because I wouldn't choose 
to draw a static pose or a guy in full armor. So it's practical to be focused in the intentions of your studies. The next lesson is extra important because it's a little habit that will make you grow your own personal style. It needs to be done at the end of your practice. It works like this. Once the drawing is finished, pick some time to add something that is not in the reference. It's up to you to decide what, but you should make it something that you want to get good at. I have this set of Ohuhu markers, which I want to learn to use to make my art stand out. So that's my twist. You don't have to go super specific for your twist. It's good if you leave room for experiments. Here, I'll show you. At the beginning, I've used the markers to add these colorful clouds. I've made several trials with different colors and with different shapes. I wasn't convinced, so I used the markers to color in the characters instead of the background, and I found that to be super boring. But then, when I did this reference here, it came naturally to me to try to do this galaxy effect, and that's so satisfying, both to do and to look at. So after this, I've done many more galaxies, trying different colors and trying different ways to insert it in the composition, like making it part of the natural landscape of the scene or a bit of a more abstract approach like this one. The idea is that setting aside time for exploration for each practice session ensures that you will discover your own unique style over time. I haven't shown you the full sketchbook yet, but it's really interesting to see how the style evolves in here. This video on the screen now is a sketchbook where I talk through I'll see you there.